This is part 22 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss customizing and using ASP.NET Identity Server with Web API. In our previous video, we discussed that the users that we have registered using this register.html page are stored in a local database that is auto-generated by ASP.NET Identity Framework. We can find that local database in app underscore data folder in the Solution Explorer. If you can't find this database, make sure you have clicked on this button which says Show All Files. This database contains several tables as you can see right here. Now let's understand the purpose of each of these tables. So when we double click on this MDF file right here, it's going to display us all the tables in Server Explorer. Underscore Migration History. The presence of this table tells us that it is using Entity Framework. ASP.NET Roles. This table stores information about roles within our application. At the moment, we don't have any roles, so this table will be empty. ASP.NET User Claims. This table stores information about claims. We don't have any claims either, so this table will also be empty. ASP.NET User Logins. This table is used for third-party authentication providers like Facebook. Google, Twitter, Microsoft, etc. Information about those logins will be stored in this table. ASP.NET user roles. This is a bridge table which basically tells us which users are in which roles. ASP.NET users. This table stores the new users that we have registered using our register.html page. So when we right click on this table and when we select show table data we should see all the users that we have registered using our register.html page notice in this table we have got you know test 1 2 and 3 at gmail.com all the users that we have registered so far using our register.html page one obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is can we change the default name of the auto generated identity database now if you look at the name of the identity database here notice we have this word ASP.NET followed by that we have a dash and then the name of our project which is employee service and then another dash and then a timestamp so can we change this default name to for example let's say users DB the answer is yes the thing that controls this name is the connection string that we have in our web.config file so if you look at the web.config file notice we have a connection string with name default connection and here we have that strange name that we see in the app data folder so now if we want the database name to be users db we have to change it here to users db and we also need to change it for this initial catalog property so again here we have that strange name so instead of that we are going to use users db let's save our changes and reload this page now let's register a new user test at test.com let's provide a password and the confirm password let's click register registration successful so we should now have a database with name users db created so let's go to solution explorer and click the refresh icon notice with an app underscore data folder we have a database with the name users db so how to change the default name of the database created by ASP.NET Identity? Change the name of the database in the default connection string in web.config file. Another question that we get is, can we have the ASP.NET Identity database created in SQL Server rather than in app underscore data folder? The answer is yes, we can. By changing the default connection string in web.config file to point to your SQL Server. Let's see how to do that now. At the moment, we have the identity database created in app underscore data folder. We want this database to be created in SQL Server instead. Notice within the databases folder, we don't have users DB. To have the identity database created in SQL Server, all we have to do is change this default connection string point to your SQL Server. So we have to change the data source attribute for that. At the moment, the value for this attribute is this, which is going to create users DB by default in app underscore data folder. Instead of that, 
I'm going to use dot, which is basically telling use local SQL Server installation. We can also use local instead of dot like that. Let's see what changes and reload this page. Now let's register a new user. Let's provide a password and the confirm password. Register. Registration successful. Now when we refresh this databases folder, notice we see the users DB. So this identity database is now created in SQL Server instead of app underscore data folder. And when we look at the tables, notice we see all the identity database tables as expected. Another question that comes to our mind at this point is, is it mandatory for the identity tables to be in a separate database? Can't we have them created in an existing database? The answer is no, it's not mandatory for the identity tables to be in a separate database. You can have them created by the identity framework in an existing database by just making your connection string point to your existing database. Let's see how to do that now. At the moment, our employee service web API project is making use of two databases. It's making use of this employee DB database, which contains our employees table, and is also making use of this users DB database, which contains the identity server tables. Now, what we want to do is have these identity tables also created in employee DB database. To achieve that, all we have to do is make this default connection string point to our employee DB database. And we do that by changing the value for this initial catalog attribute within our default connection string. So let's make this point to employee DB database. Let's save our changes, reload our web page, and register a new user. Let's provide a password and confirm password. Register, registration successful. At this point, when we refresh the tables folder within our employee DB database, notice we see all the identity tables created here as expected. In our next video, we'll discuss testing ASP.NET Web API token-based authentication using Fiddler. Thank you for listening and have a great day.